happy Monday to the Salvador Sáenz family. It's a pleasure to be in front of you again, sharing some good information, some great stories, and wonderful customer reviews. I want to thank all of you for participating and for sharing the Salvador Sáenz message to those that you care about and, and you love. And my objective tonight is talking a little bit about how we can accomplish our fitness goals and objectives and where that starts. I'm going to tell a little bit about that, some ideas and concepts and things that I've lived by that I've shared with other people who are also getting results from it. And it's information that's not necessarily available in, in our DVDs or videos. I am going to go over a, another little uh, story that illustrates some important principles of what I believe it took for me to be become successful and, and for other people to become successful. But success is not in the realization of our goal and objective. True success is in the process toward achieving that goal or objective and developing the character traits within us that help us to become the person we need to be in order to achieve those things that are important to us. So what I'd like to do tonight is talk, we'll share some customer reviews, we'll answer some questions. If you have questions, please write them in. Brooklyn is sitting behind the lighting here um, and she can send those questions to me so we can answer as many as we can. We're in a new year, we have New Year's resolutions, we have things that we want to accomplish and that's why we're going to be doing this just a little bit differently today. But if you have any questions with regards to any techniques or things we can do on the seller sizer, please feel free to, to, um, to send those questions in. Okay, so number one, for optimal weight loss, is there a minimum time one should rebound daily? Well, our cells of our body, they don't have watches, so time really doesn't mean a lot to them. I know that there's a lot of fitness programs that propose you do 20 minutes. You got to do 20 minutes of aerobics. But again, your cells don't know what 20 minutes means. What we do is dependent, or what we accomplish is dependent upon how we challenge ourselves within a certain period of time. So the intensity means more than the time itself. And there's many different ways that we can do that. So if I'm doing my real intense 10 minute routine, I can probably burn more calories, have much faster metabolism and get faster, more intense results than if I'm doing um, a 20 minute routine that is not as intense. So again, it's gonna be more the intensity. One of the great aspects of cellar size is that it's intense. It's on every single cell of your body, every muscle is working over a hundred times a minute. And I'm reminded of a, when I was in New York and I was doing a program that, and I don't know if I shared this recently or not. I talked to a lot of our, our customers on the phone. I share a lot of these stories, but I don't know if you've had a chance to hear many of them, but I was at a whole life or it was a natural life program in New York City and I'd been teaching the solar size program and six months after I'd been there I returned again for it and it was new life it was called new life it was a, another program and in those course of those six months several of our customers had come up and shared some of their experiences well while I was sitting there my wife was sitting in the chair behind me this person who was pretty big, he's a pretty big guy, dances over in front of us and he basically looked like somebody on his tippy toes and he's just light as can be on his feet, but he was really big. And I looked at my wife and her mouth was like hanging wide open watching him. And I said, you know who he is? And so he comes over and he reintroduces himself to me. His name was Dennis. And Dennis told me that since he began cellar sizing, he had lost 98 pounds in six months. 
He was light on his feet. He was still losing weight, but he was really excited about how the cellar sizer had worked for him. Joan in, in Arizona, she and I were on a television program, and she had lost 60 pounds in nine months. Uh, Mike, who is a state legislator in Utah, lost 68 pounds in six months. So again, it's not the amount of time, though, as much as it is the intensity. We'll, we'll go over some of that uh, in a few moments. But So if you do the Mr. Rebounder app, the weight loss program on that, I think it's number two, it's called Weight Loss 2, that's pretty intense. And we've had people losing a lot of weight, but it's, it's a 20-minute long program that has intervals of some very intense movements, including the Jamba Run. And I don't know of a faster way to burn calories and lose weight, personally, than what that Jamba Run can do, both short-term and long-term, for increasing metabolic processes, metabolism. What is the best rebounding for microcirculation for peripheral neuropathy for type 2 diabetes, lymphatic drainage, prostate, bladder? Do you fine tune for specific conditions or just treat generally? <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty full question. And, but it's a pretty simple answer. All of those issues are deal with body functions. And cellar size treats the body collectively as a whole, not as parts. So while we're cellar sizing, the entire body is always going to be involved with the program. So whether it's moving up and down for, to strengthen the sphincter muscle for bladder or doing the twist for the digestion, elimination processes, every other part and function of the body is also gently expanding and contracting, increasing in circulation, and adapting to the cellular size routine or program. It's not like typical aerobic activities where you work a certain muscle group or a certain part of the body. Cellular size uses G-forces. There's no jarring effect like an aerobic impact sport. Because an aerobic impact sport, although intense, it jars the nervous system, tenses up the body, causing um, a, a miscommunication within various different areas of the body and a buildup of stre stress or tension in certain areas, specific areas. And accumulatively, over time, that can affect our, our joints and our ligaments and, and tendons and so forth. So cellular size can be very intense, but again, it treats the body collectively as a whole. What is the best way to flatten belly below waist? Sit bouncing? Yeah, that's a great way to target below the, the waist is, is the, uh, and you've all seen that, where you, I'll move my monitor out of the way, but where you sit down and this is all right here in the lower abdominals. And as we get stronger, we can manipulate it more, create more stress or G-forces simply by altering the angle of our body more or creating more leverage on those areas of the body. Okay, woke up with a knot feeling under my shoulder blade. Oh, I know what that's like. Any stretches or exercise I could do while bouncing to help work it out? Scapula area. And yes, um, in fact, two weeks ago, we did a routine on the solar sizer, and I wanted to put that up on our Mr. Rebounder app. But there were several movements that we do not yet have on the Mr. Rebounder app. So I created those movements and they're working on them now so that we can get them put into the Mr. Rebounder app and then I will include those movements. But some of them include um, specific movements for the shoulders, including the, the scapula area. So taking the, the arm and just kind of hooking it under the elbow, turning your head and your shoulder so that you can stretch that area of the body and gently bounce. The gentle bouncing takes the area that you're stretching and it massages it with these little pulsations. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Um, there's additional movements that we can do that I, I will also demonstrate on our Mr. Rebounder app and then we'll incorporate them 
um, later, but that particular one was one of the ones that really helped me when I had done something to the, uh, the, the scapula area in the back of the shoulder blades, and it just opened that up. The other movement is this one here while you're gently bouncing. That's also very helpful, and we've done that before. It says, hi guys, I have a question. We do have a cellar sizer. My husband took about two months off from rebounding. He just started up a week ago. After about 10 minutes of rebounding, he gets extreme pain behind his knee, and he has to stop. The pain lasts for a while and affects how he walks. Rebounding brings out your weaknesses. What should he do to help it? It hurts too much to continue rebounding. Causes of the pain, question mark. Does he continue to rebound through the pain? Thank you for your help. It's a good question, and I don't know what that answer is. I do know that cellar size, yes, is very helpful at exposing weaknesses. The movement up and down on that area, lifting the heels up and down, they're gonna work the calf muscle and increase circulation. However, they could be indicative of something else, and therefore it would be prudent to consult with a doctor or health practitioner. If, for example, and I'm not saying it is, but if, for example, it's a blood clot in that area, and that's, that can happen, we don't want to dislodge that without knowing what that is or how to treat it properly. So if it's something like that, we don't know. We do know that cellar size is very good at breaking up blockages and opening up circulation. So that's helpful in promoting healing. But if there's an issue, it's important that we consult the doctor. And I'm gonna give you an example of a gentleman in this an ex extreme case, but it was around Christmas time. He'd gotten, or actually it wasn't, it was before Christmas. He had gotten a cellar sizer and he started to use it. And one of the techniques that we teach is the gentle twisting for the lower back and for the digestion, elimination, liver, kidney, spleen, gallbladder, pancreas, adrenals, all these internal organs. I think this is the second most important activity we teach. Well, he started to do that and he noticed the pain in his abdominal area region. And so he stopped doing it. And after a few weeks, he got motivated again. He started to do the twist again, and the pain came back with a vengeance. Well, he went to the doctors. They did a CAT scan on him, and they found polyps in his colon, and they were cancerous. So they went in, and they operated. Just before Christmas, he calls me up to tell me the story. He bought five more cellar sizes for every one of his children, and he told me that that cellar sizer saved his life. It exposed a weakness or a condition or helped him. And that's, that's one of the benefits of cellar size. Now, with most people and in most situations, yes, we work right through the issues and the body heals itself and, it's, it's, uh, and it gets stronger. Muscles and ligaments and tendons are all moving to support our, our more natural alignment and getting stronger at the same time. All right, thank you for, so much for continuing with cellar size or physical training. After many months of almost entirely health bouncing, I am seeking ways that I can improve since I can't j yet jump or do more aerobic movements. Question, can half of this cellular sizer be elevated like four inches to stimulate uphill and downhill walking for walking in place, stepping, marching, etc.? If so, would it harm the brain, legs, or shoe caps? It's not needed, it's not necessary. We have people, and I get this a lot, and I, I'm a perfect example of it as well, that will run up and down a, a mountain or a hill, and the cellar sizer has given them the ability to do it. This movement here, this gentle, what we call the jumbo walk, it's working all these muscles in the front part of the knee area. How else can you do that effectively? I don't know, but you can do it on a cellar sizer. If you want to do the jumbo run, of course, that's going to be more intense. And then jumping side to side to work or just rocking initially side to side to work the muscles and ligaments in the knee, that's gonna build the knees up. I've got story after story I can tell you of people who have gone out and they had not trained, whether it was hiking or whether it was bicycle, right, racing or riding, and they blew the people that were with them away. We've got Grace. Grace is 
in her uh, later 50s, and she is winning Ironman type programs now. Absolutely amazing at, at what she's doing. She's one of our customers. We'll, we'll be featuring her soon. What she has accomplished using the subtle sizer, um, it's it is going to greatly impress you because her her peers ask her. They say, "Wow, you must do hours of training." She told me. She says, "I'm a truck driver." I work 80 hours a week trucking. I'll take my cellar sizer out of the truck, put it on the side of the road when I need to rest or stop, and I will do my cellar size program. And then I put it back in the truck and I carry on. That's the only exercise I've gotten. You should see her accomplishments. They're going to blow you away. They're incredible. Really are. Um, so, yeah, cellar size is it's a totally different animal than, than typical exercise. Um, has anyone noticed that cellular sizing has affected their cardiovascular health? <laughs> yeah. One of my goals is to improve my physical endurance and be in better shape as I started to play floor hockey last year. Season ended early because of COVID, and I felt out of shape as you have, have to run a fair amount, and I found it hard to improve in terms of how long I could run. I was already aware I was out of shape, so this is something I want to improve because I have a fairly sedentary lifestyle. Well, I can let all of you answer that question. Um, does it improve cardiovascular health and fitness? That's absolutely. I mean, the, the things that that I'm doing at my age and running around, and, and it's, I, I'm so grateful for what this has done for me. So, yeah. Okay, let's read some customer reviews. Elise writes, it's been about two weeks for me and I wasn't expecting much because I'm just starting out, but boy, let me tell you, exclamation points. At 60, I can now bend my body over and all my soaking the bed at night with hot flashes are gone, totally gone. I used to soak two bath towels at night and now I'm totally dry, yay, yay, yay. And my blood pressure numbers are now in the normal range, woohoo. My skin has a glow to it now and I don't use lotions anymore on my skin. Another thing, my bathroom trips are back to normal. Oh my gosh, I suffered with diarrhea for years. If this is the, only the beginning, I can't wait to see what comes next. I can't tell you enough people, especially my older friends, this works, it truly works. I found the fountain of youth, exclamation points. I agree with you. God bless you in your mission in life and saving people's quality of life. Thank you a million times, thank you. Well, Elise, I think you just helped other people too. So thank you, and thank you for sharing that. I'm reminded of a gentleman who I had done a, um, a presentation at a Rotary Club up in, in Utah. And he had come up to me afterwards, and he was a pretty tall guy, um, probably in his 70s, maybe 80s. And his skin color looked very ashen. It didn't look good at all. He had some serious health issues. And he came up to me and he asked me if he could solar size and, and was very interested in it. And I had suggested to him, I said, you it would probably be a good idea to consult with your doctor um, because of your health issues. He's diabetic and he had other issues, high, high blood pressure. But he got the solar sizer and he started using it. A few weeks later, he was out in his garden, and he was doing his gardening, and his neighbor saw him. And his neighbor came over to him, and he said, I don't know, I'll call him John. He said, John, he said, what have you done? And John told him about the subtle sizer, and he, he would call me and let me know what it was doing to affect him. His skin color had changed. It looked normal. His blood pressure dropped 20 points within the first week and nearly 20 additional points two weeks after that. That's pretty impressive. He, his weight uh, went down. His gout in his right foot disappeared. His, um, he called me up one day to tell me, he said, I was able to sleep for the entire night without having to get up to go to the bathroom. Um, he was ecstatic. He became a living, walking testimony. And because of him... I was invited to a senior citizen center where there were 
it was a big new senior citizen center complex. And I was one of the first speakers. They actually had a stage. And so I was up on the stage and addressing the, um, all the people below me. And when I was done, a lady came up. And this, this, you've heard this story, some of you. A lady came up to me and she wanted to get a cellar sizer, so she did, and started cellar sizing. And I got a phone call from her about three and a half weeks later. And she's the one who said, and Mr. Hall, you should have seen me yesterday. I was on top of my rooftop repairing my own shingles and you should have seen the neighbors. She was 91 years of age. So I'm not advocating that. But what I am saying is that when we challenge our balance mechanism at any age and our balance improves and our performance improves and our quality of life improves, we're going to really understand and appreciate what this cellar sizer can do um, for us and, and for others. And I encourage everybody to try it. I'm not making claims. I'm sharing true stories. But please, you feel free to try it. And in you can create some of your own experiences. All right. Hello, Dave. My trifle will be here Thursday. I'm 68 and an avid tennis player. Just got over rotator cuff surgery and was back on court in four months. Now, to my dismay, I have a torn meniscus. I'm still playing tennis with the help of a cortisone shot, but surgery looks like it is on the horizon. My question is, will using the cellar sizer be okay? If I wear a sleeve on my knee, I can't imagine it would make it any worse when running than running around on a tennis court. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. I do look forward to bouncing my way into the golden years. Thanks so much, Jackie. Jackie. Um, yeah. I can't tell you the number of stories of people that have been able to avoid knee surgery, back surgery, and shoulder surgeries when they incorporated solar size. I have no idea how many they are, um, myself included. I tore my meniscus horizontally and, and vertically in more than one area, and the doctors all said I needed surgery. And I wrapped it, or I got one of those knee socks from Walmart, and I did exactly what I teach other people that I do to help build up the knees. That's what I did. A year later, I was on Fox News, and um, I'm happy to share it with you. I, I, I've got the link. In fact, I've asked Christine if she would post that link on Facebook. And that is the link where I, um, a year after I had ripped up my, my knee and um, I was able to take one leg out, sit all the way down to the ground, stand up again. There are more and more doctors recognizing today that the surgery itself can be worse than the torn meniscus. And as we strengthen the supporting muscles and ligaments around that area first, we can often avoid that surgery. And there are specific movements that I work with, and I work with doctors, and I teach and train the doctors in the exercises and techniques that I've done, both for strengthening the knees and for rehabilitation purposes. So in answer to your question, um, <laughs> without giving you medical advice, strengthening your muscles and ligaments of the knee with some support. The cellar sizer is very gentle and it helps build up without tearing down. A lot easier than doing things on a court where there's a jarring effect. Okay, Cheek writes, my old lady hunchback is nearly gone. I happened upon some exercises for that while searching for information about bouncing in reference to rheumatoid arthritis. My sister was re recently diagnosed. However, I've been doing variations of those exercises on this cellar sizer, so very interesting. The guy that posted the video up, up for the exercises believed the hunch is mostly fat, but as fat doesn't tend to shift that easily, I'm wondering if it's lymphedema. In retrospect, it's also a bit too localized to be fat. Thank you, Chief. There are specific movements that I've taught about how to target that area of the body with the, um, um, with the shoulders and pulling apart, arching back a little bit, bouncing up and down so that those muscles and that circulation increases and focuses on that area. So we do the pull apart and then we push in, and we pull apart and push in. 
and that's been uh, that's been helpful. Okay. All right. Terry writes, I have both. I have both. Oh, it's like I missed part of it. Okay. Hmm. Let's read this one. Okay. Um, Terry writes, I have both, and I can tell you that bungees are a nice soft balance, but I didn't start dropping inches like crazy until I switched to the solar sizer. I've lost over 30 pounds since August. Weight loss has been consistent from the beginning at one to two pounds a week. I started rebounded workouts on an LNR in October, but the inches really started to drop after switching to the cellar sizer in November, Terry. And people ask me that, you know, why is that? Well, when we, when a unit is too soft, it doesn't help push or promote circulation or a weight-bearing activity. We want enough G-forces and weight-bearing activities so that we strengthen the muscles and the bones and, and increase that circulation and give our body um, a good fitness um, program. If it's too soft and we don't have enough resistance, then we don't get those benefits. The cellar sizer was designed to create resistance but without jarring. That's why we have the tridactable spring. Somebody called me up earlier today and they said, well, can I get one unit for all family members? Of course. The cellar sizer uses a tridactable, self-adjusting spring design. It's the only, tri only tapered spring design of its kind on the market. It uses our patented technology. So yes, whether you're six months old and have some help or whether you're over a hundred years old. Everybody will get the support that they need on the solar sizer in the spring adapts to the weight or the height that the person is shoving. Okay, so we're setting, I wrote some notes and some ideas just kind of a, as a thought and then I want to, yes. Oh, we got another question. Um, just received my trifold, I'm loving it. I have a meniscus tear complaint and it's, do you have any suggestions for jumping? Yeah. Says, Same thing, the, the meniscus, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's the movement that, um, this is what I do to build up the knees, okay, again, it's starting off always at the health bounce, and then as we get stronger, uh, or we warm up, then we can focus on more in the front part of the knee right here, and then from there, I, I work on the side, both sides of the knee, and then I add a little hop, Eventually, as I build up to it, we don't start off with that, but when I had my meniscus tear, that's what I did, and I did wear some support to build it back up. It was amazing. Um, so I think the body has a great deal of potential if we're willing to be patient and help the body do the job it knows how to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, Brittany? Um, can bouncing while seated be detrimental to the coccyx or back nerves? Uh, to the what? To the back nerves. Oh, can bouncing up and down? Well, it depends on how you approach it. If you have nerves that are already injured, cellar size is, if you do the, the gentle movement up and down, they're less jarring here than walking on the ground, but you're getting a pumping action. As we rock side to side, we can drop the hips down into the mat so we can start to loosen up that lower lumbar very gently and build up the muscles as well. As we do the gentle twist, we can start to loosen up even further. Now, if we're having back discomfiture, one of the techniques that I teach is where you lie down on the solar sizer, taking the vertical pressure off of the disc and the nerves. And when you lay down on the solar sizer with your feet up on a chair, knees bent, a towel or something behind your head, and your arms spread apart, and then we have you have somebody else gently bouncing up and down. I, I feature that. It's in our YouTube videos. It's also in the DVD, Solar Size the Elephant Exercise. But it takes the vertical pressure off so the nerves are not feeling threatened. The muscles literally can start to relax. And then as we gently move up and down, we feed that circulation through that whole area of the body. Then we can rock side to side and the hips gently roll. As they gently roll, we loosen up the vertebral joints more, taking more pressure off the nerves and increasing more circulation to the disc. And so we just do that. 
going back and forth, and it's had amazing results for a great number of people. Um, can swallowing happen in the hip and thighs? Asking for my mom. She's been doing about five minutes a day and is having swelling and also muscle aches. I told her it might be lymphatic. Yeah, it's, and it, it very well could be. The movement up and down on a solar sizer is going to challenge the weak areas of the body, not by tearing them down, but by building them up. As we gently move up and down, as we lift the heels up and down, the heel flexes, or the calf muscle flexes, helping to feed circulation back up to the heart. If we have weaknesses in the circulatory system, yes, it can help expose those weaknesses. So we do it gently. I tell people drink lots of water um, because it also helps to break up heavy metals, toxins, poisons, preservatives, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, all these things we're exposed to. So as we're moving up and down, drink the water, make it easier for the body to help flush things out. But if you think of it like a a dam, if you have a dam that's holding back, circulation is not as good, and the dam's holding back the water. If the water continually hits against the dam over and over and over and over, pretty soon it can break through that dam and open up that circulation. So if we have weaknesses in our circulatory system and we're moving up and down, we're creating a pumping action that helps to open up the circulatory systems, whether it's in the cardiopulmonary circulatory system or within the lymphatic system. Yeah? Are there specific exercises for someone who has a herniated cervical disc? Herniated cervical disc. Well, the one where you lie down on the solar sizer and, and gently um, rocking side to side, the gentle movement up and down. It's, it's not, herniated discs are very common, okay? People get them all the time but we can help open up the vertebral joints so that those discs can help reposition themselves. And I don't know a better technique than where you lie down on the solar sizer, move up and down, rock side to side, so it helps things move and position, muscles loosen up and moving up and down again. Again, incredible, remarkable stories from people being able, <laughs> and a lot of them are doctors, a lot of them have been my customers. And that movement has been beneficial to them as well. So um, it's definitely worth experiencing. Any others? Okay, you've all heard me say you can't find happiness at the end of a journey if you're not willing to take it with you along the way. And far too often we focus on the goal or the objective of what we want to achieve and not enough on the journey and that it that that we are all involved in. It's the journey that defines us. It's the journey that helps to develop the character traits. It's the journey that's going to give us the opportunity to become the person we need to be in order to achieve the things that are important to us in our life. Now when it comes to our physical fitness, it's a it's the same thing. I remember uh, Oh, a story that I used to, I've shared, and I shared this a year ago, but since we're, we're all in kind of a New Year's resolution type mode, and we know that a year is going to go by, and hopefully we're all going to still be around, and the question is, what are we going to accomplish in that year? So it reminds me of a story. <clears throat> And several of you have probably heard me say it before, but it starts out like this. Two young men are standing in front of the school on a, on a beautiful sunny day. Puffy white clouds intersperse a blue, blue sky. There's a gentle sand and a breeze blowing, and off into the distance, you can see Catalina Island. Our two friends have just finished their very first week of high school. They're standing in front of the school talking about their activities, their teachers, the students that they've met, their assignments, while they're waiting for the bus to pick them up. And as they're standing there waiting, Joe Jock drives by in a brand new red convertible Corvette. He's got the top down. He's got a letterman's jacket on. He's got some medals glistening in the sun. He's got a cheerleader wrapped around his neck, nibbling on his ear, and a great big Cheshire grin on his face. And as he drives by, he sees his peers, and he waves to them, and they all wave back, and they cheer, because Joe Jock's everybody's hero. 
He's the captain of the football team. He's our all-star quarterback. Besides, he's a likable guy. Well, our two friends were watching this, and one of them's named, Darn I Wish I Had. And the other one's named, Gee, I'm glad I did. Well, Darn I Wish I Had looks over at Joe Jock. He looks at that letter. He looks at those medals. He looks at that cheerleader. He looks at that car, and he says, Darn, I wish I had that. Gee, I'm glad I did, looks over at the car, and he looks at the letter, he looks at the girl, and, and he looks back at Darn, I wish I had, and he says, you know, Darn, they're on a first name basis now, <laughs> he says, you know, Darn, if Joe Jock can do it, so can we. And Darn looks at G in utter dismay, he says, you can't do that, we can't do that, we don't have time. We're inundated with homework, we've got our chores, besides, Star Trek comes on every night at 5 o'clock and we'd miss it. But G is not listening to Darn. G is thinking of the kind of person he wants to become in order to achieve the things that are important to him in his life right now. So he goes out and he gets that job as a dishwasher. He becomes the very best dishwasher they have. He puts his homework in these plastic inserts, pins it up on a cork board while he's doing the dishes, wipes off the steam every now and then so he can do his study. He goes out for the track team. He makes it. It's his first day out on the field. He's decided he wants to become a pole vaulter. So he's holding this long steel pole, looking down this long, narrow asphalt runway, at the very end of which there is a steel box embedded in the ground. At 100, what he needs to do is pick up that pole, run down that runway, plant the end of the pole into the box, jump up in the air, and land on the pits on the other side. And at 129 pounds of steel determination, he picks up that pole and he starts to run down that runway. And he runs faster and faster and faster. He gets to the end, he plants that pole, he starts on up and he stops right about here. Now the pits are over here, the asphalt runway is over here. He's not a physics expert, but he realizes that as he's holding on to the top of the pole for dear life, he's going to land right back on that runway where he took off from. And sure enough, he hits that runway, he rolls a couple times, he picks himself off, up. He dusts himself off, he grabs that pole, and he heads right back down that runway. Because one thing G understands, even this early in his life, and you might want to write this one down, persistence overcomes resistance. He gets back down to the um, starting position, his freshman year goes by, his sophomore year goes by, his junior year goes by, he's now a senior at the Freeway CIF League Championships. He's looking much further down that runway than he had just a few years ago. At a bar whose height he'd only visualize going over. He's got a long 13 and a half foot fiberglass catapult. And at 175 pounds of steel determination, he picks up that pole and he starts to run down that runway. And he runs faster and faster and faster. He gets it in, he plants that pole, that pole bends. He starts on up, he sees the bar. He pulls his hips up over the bar. He's on his way back down, the bar's still there. He hits the pin, he's done it. First place, CIF Freeway League Championships. Well, we find the year fast coming to a close. And darn I wish I had, is standing in front of the school, waiting for a ride. Now, he's graduated from the bus scene. He's waiting for one of his friends to pick him up. But as he's standing there thinking about his high school career, she drives by in a brand newly painted Triumph TR4A IRS independent rear suspension. It's a convertible. He's got the top down. He's got a letterman's jacket on. He's got metals glistening in the sun. He's got a girl wrapped around his neck. And as he drives by, he sees Darn. And he waits to him, and Darn waits back because they're still good friends. And Darn looks at that car, that letter, that girl. And he says to himself, one last time, his high school career, Darn, I wish I had. A year is going to go by for every one of us. How we choose to make that year work for us is going to determine to a large degree our goals or our objectives or our results. Those results start up here in the mind. 
You've all heard me say it. In order to have, well, most of many of you, in order to have what we have not, we must first become what we are not. As we become what we are not, then what we have not becomes the natural manifestation of the person we've now become. But in order to become what we are not, we must first be able to see ourselves, each other, that which is around us, and that which is within us. Not just as we are today, but as we can become tomorrow, which is the way I pray God sees each one of us. The moment we see ourselves not just as we are, but as we can become in our family and home as a father and mother, husband and wife, in our financial and our career, in our physical and our health, our social and cultural, spiritual, ethical, or mental educational areas of our life. We define it. We see the vision. We hold on to the vision, first step of faith, the ability to see things not just as they are, but as they can become. We hold on to the vision. It grows into a desire. We nurture the desire with prayer, meditation, affirmation, proclamation, declaration. The desire becomes a passion. The passion compels us to action. The action creates the end result. Where does it all begin? It starts with the vision. Ideas affect the way we think. The way we think affects the way we act. The way we act to a large degree is going to determine our results. If we want to take charge of our results, we have to be willing to take charge of the ideas that we are allowing ourselves to be exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis. Because if we don't, then by default, the ideas we are being exposed to will take charge of us. And most people, as a result of that, will live in a reactive mode, constantly allowing the conditions around them to far too often govern the conditions within them. When you surround yourself with positive, gold-directed, enthusiastic people who lift you up, then you will have greater strength, a greater conviction, and a greater ability to reach your goal and objective. That's what the Seller for Size family here is for, to help encourage each one of you in your goals and your objectives, to help you believe and know that you have the support to accomplish the things that are important to you. But it all starts here. Now, we're all going to be challenged. Everyone, we're going to fall. That's normal. What did you do? Pick himself up, dust himself off, and start it again. It's the same thing. We need to continually. It's not how many times we fall that counts. <laughs> it's how many times we get back up. No one can destroy your faith unless you consent. So don't ever consent. Define the goal, the objective. Surround yourself with positive people as much as you can. Eliminate the negative. Don't fight against that which is wrong. Promote that which is right. There's a whole different energy in it. When you're fighting against that which is wrong, you're empowering that which you're fighting against. Nobody is fat. Nobody is obese. Nobody is trying to lose weight. What we're doing is we're focusing on reaching our greater health, on performing better, on our looking and, and achieving the look that we want. That's our focus. That's where our desire comes from. If the negative things pop up in your mind, the moment you recognize it, replace it with something that is positive. As we turn up the light, as, we, as our character gets stronger, because we exercise our mental of part of our health and fitness, we're exercising the mental part just as much as we're doing the physical. As we exercise the mental, it grows stronger too. And then the conditions around us, it's not that they change, but the conditions within us have. So we respond differently to conditions around us. So whatever your goal or your objective is, create that vision, hold on to that vision. Let it grow into a desire and then nurture the desire. Pray about it, meditate on it, visualize it, and speak it. There's power in the spoken word. Proclaim it, declare it. Every day and every way I'm getting better and better. Every day I'm on the subtle side, I'm a success. I love seller sizing. I do, I, but, but I didn't initially. 
I was just doing because I needed to. But now I really enjoy it. There's such a power in our ability to see ourselves not as we are, but as we can become. There are forces that are around us today that we live in that are very contentious, divisive, that are creating fear, anger, hostility, depression. We're dealing with it. But we don't need to focus on it. It's there. In some form or another, it's always going to be there. But with us, it doesn't have to be. With us, we can focus and create the desire to become the person we need to be in order to achieve the things that we can achieve. And you can do that. I believe it. I've seen it. I'm watching it. You're watching it. So, I just wanted to share some of those thoughts. Hopefully there's something I said that might make sense. But I know for me, that was me. I was G. And I know that in the process of becoming, the fruits of what I'm becoming is seen in what I'm achieving. But the true success isn't in the achievements. It's in the becoming. Because what we achieve, we're going to leave it all behind anyway most part. But who we become in the process, that's the real treasures. So, I encourage all of you, continue to solarize. If you only get on it for two to three minutes, in those two to three minutes, you have every organ, every muscle, every valve expanding and contracting over a hundred times a minute. So that movement up and down opens up circulation, breaks up blockages, stress and tension, and beyond that, as you know, there is so much that can be done on this solar sizer. And again, my family does it. Um, they all know this is, this is all I do. This is the only exercise I get. It's all done on this solar sizer. You can do it too. But with the advantage, solar sizer works from the inside out. Thank you. God bless all of you. I'm grateful for the solar size family. I'm grateful for the support you are to me. And I'm so grateful for the support you are to each other. Thank you. Remember, you don't need to work out when you can play in. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. And thank you again for sharing this information with others. We'll see you in two weeks.